So let us prepare our hearts and minds for the worship of God. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Arise, shine, for your light is come. The glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Nations shall come to your light, and rulers to the brightness of your dawn. They shall come from Sheba, bearing gold and incense, singing the praise of God. We read Psalm 72 responsively. Give the ruler your justice, O God, and your righteousness to a royal heir. May the ruler judge your people with righteousness and your poor with justice. May the mountains yield prosperity for the people, give deliverance to those who are needy and crush the oppressor. May the ruler live while the sun endures and as long as the moon throughout all generations. May the ruler be like rain that falls on the mown grass, like showers that water the earth. In those days, may righteousness flourish and peace abound until the moon is no more. May the kings of Tarshish and of the isles render tribute. May the kings of Sheba and Seba bring gifts. May all kings bow down all nations serve the ruler. For the ruler delivers those who are needy when they call, those who are poor and those who have no helper, and has pity on the weak and the needy and saves the lives of the needy. The ruler redeems their life from oppression and violence and views their life as precious. We pray together. Holy God, you speak to us in scripture and in prayers, in sunrises and sunsets, in friends and in strangers, in dreams and in songs. You are speaking all the time. And how often do we miss it? Still our minds so that we can listen with a depth that we have not heard before. Still our hearts so that we can receive with open arms what it is you are offering to us today. We know you are speaking, so we are listening. Gratefully we pray, amen. The scripture today is from Isaiah 60 verses one through six. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise among you and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall, and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. The mystery of the ages revealed to all. Thanks be to God.
The gospel lesson today is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising, and we have come to pay him homage. Then King Herod heard this, and he was frightened, and all of Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judea, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and seek and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen in its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the king had, the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The mystery of the ages revealed to all. Thanks be to God. I think among many other ways to start a new year, one of the best ways is to start off a new year is to talk about the Marvel Cinematic Universe. There's been a lot of buzz about the new Spider-Man movie that came out a few weeks ago. And hang on, I promise I won't spoil anything. But there was a post on a message board that I saw a few weeks ago. And in light, I've been thinking about it in light of the scripture today. The post said this, it's crazy how the Marvel Cinematic Universe makes older content retroactively even better than they originally were. So for example, the No Way Home Spider-Man trailer shows us villains from two other Spider-Man series combining into this latest Marvel movie. We see villains Dr. Oct. Green Goblin, Sandman, Electro, and Lizard, five great characters from the decade of Spider-Man Spider movies before 2021. What this sparked was curiosity in those older content and movies, retroactively making the masses curious about those movies who maybe had never seen those old Spider-Man movies before. What this did immediately was send people spinning and asking, do we need to watch the other man, the other Spider-Man series? The question was basically, do I need to invest and watch five other movies to make this one movie make sense? And the answer was, and always continues to be, well, not really, but it might be helpful. There's something magical when you experience something that then invites you further down that rabbit hole. Marvel does this really well. And I suggest today that our Bible does it really well too. When we read this passage from Matthew, we see a familiar cast of characters that we might have seen in older Bible stories. We see kings and stars. And this might be ringing bells in your head. And that might make you question, do I need to read the Hebrew Bible to make this one story make sense? And again, the answer was, and will always continue to be, not really, but it would be helpful. So let's strip it down and look. There's a king, there's magi or astrologers and a star. The magi enter a kingdom and do what is normal. They go to make themselves known to the king. The king then does a normal thing and seeks out threat to his power. The star then does a normal thing and, stir, and serves the God of creation. We have seen these characters before in the Bible narrative. 
The only thing left for us to do is to piece together the story and recover what Matthew was really trying to tell us. Let's look at King Herod. Herod the Great was a true historical king. He was born in 72 BCE. He grew up in south of Judea and he rose to power because his father had a good relationship with Julius Caesar. Herod the Great continues to be a very divisive character to historians, mostly because of this passage. In reality, Herod was raised a Jew, so he understood this population more than any other vassal king could of Rome. He built public baths out of respect for Jewish purity rituals, and he created currency without his face or any other icon on it for specific use in the temple. Herod was a great builder whose works still stand and you might go see today. Overall, King Herod in this story is just doing what kings do. Kings have been a hot button issue throughout the Hebrew Bible. In 1 Samuel chapter 18, the Hebrew people really, really want a king. In 1 Samuel chapter 8, the Hebrew people, or and Samuel tells the Samuel tells the people in 1 Samuel, these will be the ways of the king. The king will rule over you. He will take your sons and appoint them to his chariots and to be his horsemen and to run before his chariots. The king will take your male and female slaves and the best of your cattle and your donkeys and put them to work. The king will take one tenth of your flock and you shall be his slaves. But faced with this reality of what kings might do, the people still say, no, we are determined to have a king over us so that we might be like our other nations, that our king might govern us and go out before us and fight our battles. The truth is nobody throughout the Bible is deceived on how a king might act. King Herod is not insane and he's not mad. He was a king trying to uphold his power sacrificing the sons, the daughters, and slaves for his will. This is what a king does. They feel threatened by a child. The Magi then come to meet King Herod. They're seeking the king of the Jews. This must have been very jarring for Herod, who, who thought of himself as the king of the Jews. Herod gives them permission to seek the child intentionally, so that he might use the information to keep his power. Depending on your translation of the Bible, these magi are kings. Some translations and the song we will sing will tell us that these people who come are kings. What Matthew is trying to do is to create that hyperlink, that connection between the passages that Leah and Maylene read this morning. Isaiah 60 and Psalm 72 tell us that kings will bow. Nations will serve this Messiah. So when we read about kings kneeling, we already might understand what that means. Regardless, the Magi are doing what they are paid to do, to read the astrological signs and to seek out what it means for the world. Historians suggest that it took them years to make this journey. By the time they arrived at Herod's door, they know what is happening. They know their Hebrew scriptures and they are seeking the king of the Jews who is not Herod. This is what Magi do. They read the signs and they seek endlessly for a Messiah. And lastly, I wanna suggest that the star is a character in this story. But if that is the case, what is it doing? And what is its desires or motivations? Can a star have motivations? Well, let's look at it. The Magi say, we have seen his star rising. And then the star moved with them until it stopped at where a child was. This is a really weird thing. Um, this is not how stars act. And the more that I read into this story, I can only picture one thing. A barking dog wagging its tail and guiding you back to its master. So in my head, as I picture this story, this is a heavenly star dog barking and romping and celebrating and wagging its tail, inviting you to follow it back to who it wants to show you. 
And the thing is, I don't really find this very silly and I don't find it totally off. Because if we think back to Genesis 1, God says, let there be light. And there is light. Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth. And the stars were formed. So this is what stars do. They serve the God of creation. They tell us about the God of creation. So I would say what Matthew is trying to do here is much like our Spider-Man movies do. They invite us down into a new world, into a rabbit hole of what the biblical narrative tells us. Matthew is trying to say that these characters, kings and stars, point us to the older stories to tell us who this child is. The child who the Magi seek as the king of the Jews is a threat to the king. He's a threat now, but he will be a joke. But this joke, the king of the Jews, will be a sign over the crucified man later. This Christ child, not predicted as a king, but as a shepherd who will gather and feed his flock. This creator of creation, we meet here vulnerable at the hands of the created. So this year, we have an opportunity to choose who we will be in this passage. We can be like a king. We can be threatened by anything that might take our power away, take our rights away, take our privileges away. We can seek to manipulate power, abuse the stranger, and do violence upon others. And I think Matthew is showing us what kings are capable and perhaps rightly do. We can make that choice this year, 2022. Are we the king? And will we sacrifice all to uphold our power? We can be like the Magi, curiously seeking and pursuing Christ. We can travel we can travel cultures, time, and knowledge to understand what is actually happening. We can understand how best to pay respect and adore this child by pursuing the knowledge of this Christ. This will mean reading scriptures, confronting power, and seeing clearly how absurd the story of a Christ in a manger is. So this year, 2022, can we be the Magi? Can we be curious? And can we seek the Messiah? Or can we be the star? We can eagerly celebrate and point to the Christ child. We can be sure of what we are seeing, heralding a reordering of creation, inviting others to join us. This year, 2022, will we be the star? Will we point to and serve this God of creation? The truth is, we will be the star, we will be the magi, and we will be the king. We will be all of these characters throughout this year. There is not one character that we can actually be. But for 2022, I pray that we find ourselves here. I pray that we turn away from the kingly desires of the world. I pray that we find ourselves curious and seeking Christ in our midst. I pray that we romp and we celebrate what God is doing anew this year. I pray that in a world of kings and stars, we count ourselves among the stars. Amen. Will you pray with me? Let us pray. God, who is made manifest in Jesus Christ, as the prophet Isaiah rang out, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Empower your church, O God, to ring out the good news of the light of your son, Jesus Christ, who pierces even the darkness. As a star rose high into the nighttime sky to draw nations to the Christ child, send your blessing, O God, on this nation and every nation and draw the whole world to your peace and truth. As John the Baptist guides throngs of people to the edge of the wilderness and baptizes Jesus in the River Jordan, we pray that you guide our country and our leaders to the ways of justice and righteousness. Like the Magi who traveled from afar to bring gifts and to celebrate the Savior's birth, we pray for this community and for those who celebrate their own birthdays and anniversaries this year. As Jesus climbs the mountains and proclaims blessings on all the people of the world, we pray for the sick, the distressed, 
the poor and the lame. As Jesus called his disciples to leave their nets and boats to follow him, we pray for those we love and who have answered your call to follow Jesus to your heavenly kingdom. Give them your peace. Lord Jesus, light of the world, hear our prayers and make our reflections of your light that places of darkness in your world will be pierced by your light and that all nations would be drawn to, drawn to you and overwhelmed with joy. So as you taught us to pray and pray with us now, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us arise and shine. Our light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Amen. The peace of the God be with you. And also with you. And also with you.